I would normally film this sort of thing in my car, but with the absolutely lethal temperatures outside, I think I'll stick to the safety of indoors. Speaking of safety, driving the Mercedes EQS, I can't say that I really felt all that safe. The biggest reason for that was the brake pedal, because, and I wish I was kidding here, it moves on its own. You can be gently pressing on the pedal and it will just move away from your foot. I can't describe how terrifying that is when you first feel it happen, especially because I was hooning it round Millbrook's hill route. The reason for it moving is based in sanity, just about, and it's called regen braking. Regenerative braking isn't exactly new or even all that complicated. BMW has had efficient dynamics on their internal combustion engine cars for a decade or more, and anyone who drives is plenty familiar with engine braking. In simple terms, when driving along in an electric vehicle, energy is flowing from the battery to the motor to make it spin, which in turn spins the wheels and moves the car forward. When you stop accelerating, the wheels start spinning the motor freely, which acts like a generator, sending power back into the battery. You can vary how strong the braking feel you get is, and therefore how much energy you harvest. With a number of manufacturers offering literal flappy paddles on the steering wheel, not for gear selection, but for regen braking levels. Some manufacturers, though, have taken this a step further and are using the brake pedal as a, a controller for how much regen braking you want. This is where the problem lies, so let's talk about brake pedal travel. In a normal, say, petrol or diesel-based car, when you press on the brake pedal, there is some amount of dead space before the brake pads start gripping the discs. You press the pedal until you feel the biting point, then, depending on how far you press the pedal, more, the, the more pressure the pads act or put onto the discs, slowing the car down faster. What EV makers have started doing is modifying the pedal travel so that all of that dead space, and actually often a little bit more, is now a controller for how much regen braking you want. Then, once you sort of pass the, the halfway mark, the friction brakes kick in like normal on top of that regen braking. That means if you only press the pedal, say a quarter of the way in, you're getting no friction braking and about half of the available regen braking. Just lifting off the accelerator only slows the car by whatever the manufacturer decides is a, a normal amount of engine braking. To get it to regen brake, you have to press the brake pedal but not so far as to waste energy by using the friction brakes instead. And this is the problem that Mercedes have. They decided that since the first half of the brake pedal travel is just regen control, if you have the car in a high rege regen mode already, they would just move the pedal to the biting points of the friction brakes so you don't have a, a lot of wasted travel in the pedal before actually braking. See? It comes from a place of logic, even if the result is absolute insanity. This sort of decision is created as a halfway house between just letting you use regen braking as if it were strong engine braking, because it is, and keeping everything exactly the same so that in theory there is no learning curve. Personally, I think this is a pretty horrible approach, especially since using EVs in their braked modes or the one pedal driving modes and that many vehicles tout is not only easier, but more efficient. The other catch is that automakers seem to be undersizing the friction brakes themselves. That EQS felt like the second you stepped on the actual friction brakes, ABS had to kick in from stopping them from just locking up rather than providing effective braking force. They felt worryingly weak, which isn't what you want to feel when hurtling to a, a tight bend in a two-ton, 150,000-pound monster. Not 
all makers are doing that. The BMW i4 M50 felt a lot more conventional in its brake feel. And to be honest, I get why they're trying to shrink the friction brakes. They don't get used nearly as much, plus the smaller the discs, the less rotating mass needs to be spun up, making for a much more efficient drive, plus that's less unsprung mass too, so even better handling and control. The catch is that those friction brakes are badly needed for emergencies, where it doesn't really matter how efficient the car is if you can't stop the thing. So what's the solution? Well, in short, leave the damn brake pedal alone. The learning curve for regen braking is not steep. And it's one that I feel people should learn to more effic efficiently, effectively, and safely drive this new mode of transport. One pedal driving modes are easier to use. And if that means that you leave the brake pedal alone, then even better. Keeping the brake pedal for friction braking alone simplifies the driving experience and I'd argue makes it safer. And before anyone pipes up with the comment about brake lights not illuminating when using one pedal driving modes, I have a simple solution for that. Your car already has multiple accelerometers on board. Have the in-car control module monitor an accelerometer looking for braking force. And when the braking force exceeds a, a set limit, turn the brake lights on. Easy. So in short, regen braking is great, but EV makers are unsure if you can handle the slight change in driving style, so are complicating the control system in, I think, a misguided effort to try and simplify it. I hope this sort of complication dwindles and the easier one-pedal driving modes eventually win out. With that said, those are my thoughts, but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the one pedal driving modes versus these sort of adaptive brake pedals? Uh, is this the, the sort of solution you're after, one or the other? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. If you want to see more videos from me, I have a load of videos, including the one driving the Mercedes EQS and the BMW i4. Feel free to check that out on the end cards. If you want to stay up to date on the new videos from me, in fact, I'm likely going to do one about BMW uh, in the next couple of weeks, so maybe uh, hit the subscribe button for that one. Uh, and otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to pick up a hoodie or t-shirt like this one, feel free to do so with the link in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.